I'm sure you've seen the pieces. Um, there's been a lot of articles out there the past week or so saying the Democratic Party is looming a fundraising crisis. There's a looming fundraising crisis ahead of um, you know 2018 when they are hoping that they can defeat Trump politics, Trump Republicanism uh, with the Democratic solutions. Now, of course, the Democratic Party, as you all know, is at its lowest point since 1929. They have now lost over 1,100 seats in nine years, and they are worried that they are not going to be able to win back the legislative seats and local seats. Obviously, they want to make progress in Congress. Uh, good luck winning that back, but you know, and, and maybe even win back the Senate. But they need to do that with money. Now, just just a little background information, because I, I think you know. For those of you who aren't as, as deep in this as, as most um, political reporters are, the DNC is a separate entity. It is related. It is housed in the same building as the DSCC. It's housed in the same building as the DCCC. That's the Senate Committee, Campaign Committee, and the Congressional Campaign Committee. But their budgets are separate. Their emails are different. And they all have these emails that are sent to us like, oh, my God, the world's ending. We have no money. The reality is, is the DNC which is the institute that is supposed to be uh, giving money to state parties so they can go out there and recruit candidates and train candidates and try to win back these legislative seats. Um, you know, they're, they, this is what we were covering the DNC race about, is that they raised more money than ever under President Obama. So are they in crisis? Well, yeah, they, they might actually have a fundraising crisis for a lot of reasons. Uh, one being that they don't have a sitting president. But they knew that was going to happen. That's historic. When the Democrats are not in charge of the presidency, when they don't have a sitting president, uh, they don't raise as much money. That's just how it works. The president's not on TV every day. The president's not championing, championing their agenda. You know, the president isn't jetting around to Beverly Hills where I am right now uh, doing $35,000 a plate fundraisers. That's the business of the Democratic Party. And that is why the Democratic Party you know, under President Obama, raised more money than ever. Put a bookmark right there. We'll come back to that. So they knew that without a sitting president, they wouldn't be able to raise enough money. So the crisis was coming. They talked about this during the DNC race. It's one of the reasons why uh, they were saying that Tom Perez was going to be such a good a chair that he knew how to fundraise, he knew how to manage a budget, and um, you know he's great on TV. It's been a few months now. We'll see. You know now they're in crisis. Okay, I also think that this crisis, which is legitimate, um, is an excuse for them to f scare their donors into raising money. So there's a couple of things here. They need to raise money without a doubt. You can't you know invest money in state parties and revolutionize the Democratic Party without raising money. That's without a doubt. But there's also all this money that they raised under the presidency for the presidency. Most of the money that was spent by the DNC was focused on the presidency. When President Obama took office and he took over the DNC and, you know, appointed Debbie Wasserman Schultz, he also had, um, well, that was a little, a little bit later, but he also set up OFA. And OFA, in my opinion, was a way of privatizing efforts in the DNC. It was a separate organization. It still is a separate organization with a separate list. And it was stacked with Obama loyalists, Obama consultants. You know, it's all about like who's controlling what. In the end, OFA uh, did, did do a lot when it came to health care. But, you know, the DNC was abandoned and it was abandoned. You know, the buck stops at President Obama. President Obama ignored the Democratic Party. He ignored the state races. He ignored the legislative races. He ignored, you know, investing money in state parties. And somehow, even after the shellacking in 2010, they continued to ignore and focus on the presidential efforts. So the DNC became a presidential fundraising machine. Because you know why? There's a lot of money in presidential races. There's a lot of money that consultants make. The earlier they can start talking about presidential races, the earlier those consultants can start raising money and taking in money. Instead of going to state parties where they're going to have to divvy up that more money more. So it became a centralized fund, a slush fund, essentially, that was not being spent on state races, state parties, which is where we win back um, our seats. So now we have this dilemma where they knew that the president wasn't going to be in office to go out there and do these $35,000 plate dinners with Biden and, and Michelle Obama. 
And, you know, full disclosure, I was a national co-chair, so I'm very familiar with this. I was doing this in Los Angeles, and I, you know, thought the money was being spent wisely. You know, there were a lot of people out there, you know, breaking their backs, calling people up, talking to their friends, trying to raise money so that we could win back the Senate and we could win back these seats. But now we know that that money was not being spent, it was being burned, and it was being burned on consultants. You can reverse engineer the budget, still won't be perfect, but you know, it's very clear that a lot of this money was going to maybe four or five major consultants, and it was definitely not being spent on state parties, which is why we've been decimated at the state, devastated at the, a state level, the state level. So, okay, so the money um, is not being raised for the DNC now. Even if, say, I would say right now, like, guys, we need to invest in the Democratic Party if we're going to win back state races because we need to reform, I don't trust that until the Democratic Party releases its budget. The Democratic Party's decision-making has been unilaterally made by the DNC chair in its history. Now, no organization, no company would have a budget you know, be, you would spend on a budget without having board approval or executive committee membership approval. The DNC is not following its own bylaws. It's not, it's not putting this budget before its executive committee. The DNC members are all props. The first vote that they ever had in, in, in like 20 year history was at the DNC chairs race. And even that, you know, they were still used as props and controlled. So we have this problem in the Democratic Party where they're saying we don't have money but nobody knows where the money's being spent because it's all the decisions have been made at the top, the very, very, very top. And it, it actually, you can do a little bit of research and realize that in you know three years, arguably two or three consultants were making $800 million. And then there were some states that were complaining that they had $2,000 in their fund. That is so egregious, it's beyond egregious. Just like, you know, 10 million, just throw 10 million to the states. Think of all we could have done if we had just taken a sliver of that consulting budget, which by the way, lost us the presidency, so they're not even good. And if you put that into states and started recruiting candidates so we could win back at the local level. That's what Republicans do, they invest. They realize that local is everything. Instead, these people were so greedy at the top that they wanted to control all the resources and they fooled all these donors into thinking that they were doing it right okay now let's stop here right here because there are factions within these factions now we have an issue where um secretary clinton has set up a super PAC and there's another super PAC with a lot of former clinton people who are going out there and raising money from these same donors who who don't trust the dnc because don't forget hillary clinton went out and blamed the dnc for her loss so now they don't trust the dnc and Hillary's like, well, trust us. We're going to set something up. We're going to do this whole resistance super PAC, this onward together super PAC. And we're going to go across the country and try to win back these seats. So that's their way of keeping these donors who were, were frustrated by the losses and all the money that they put out there, keeping them in their space and not putting them into the DNC. But the reality is it's all about the money being made. These are giant slush funds. When did Onward Together organize you know, any rallies across the country. I mean, they're doing these like, like speakers rallies, but they're not, you know, they're not on the grassroots. They're not going door to door. They're not doing the stuff that, that the DSA is doing. Um, and definitely not the resistance super PAC, which is how a super PAC is going to resist. Like that's not grassroots organizing. So that's one thing. But this one is even more disturbing. President Obama, who ignored the DNC, who is the biggest fundraiser for the DNC, the biggest spokesperson, you know, everybody misses President Obama right now. President Obama has now set up this, has now raised over $10 million with Eric Holder, former attorney general, to win back state legislatures. I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What did you, you ignored state legislatures for eight years. Now you think you can fix them? There's this thing called the DLCC. The DLCC has relationships with state parties, has relationships with state legislative leaders, and they're not being funded because the DNC was putting all of their money to the top and not funding the DLCC. And so now President Obama is going out there targeting these donors and saying, well, I, you've got to trust me now. Guys, this is all about patronage. In the old days, of Tammy Hall, 
as corrupt as it was, it served a purpose. It was corrupt, yes, but it also served a purpose. It was because the ethnics in New York did not have a space. They were not being represented. And so as corrupt as they were organized, they took care of their communities. They put together services. There was a lot of patronage, a lot of um, corruption, but there were still services attached. Now the Democratic Party is all patronage with no services. How can you lose so much and be so greedy and so controlled by these consultants? And let me just give you an example of what happens because I used to raise money in Southern California where I am right now. And these people, these you know, DC consultants would come out and they get all these surrogates to come and do parties and speeches and all these fundraisers and bundlers would put together hosts who would raise money and, and the goal was to make, you know, to raise all this money at these parties. And then the consultants would set up these private meetings with us and say, okay, this is what we're gonna do. And it was all a bunch of BS. It was their spin. They were trying to keep the donors in a bubble where they didn't really understand what's happening on the ground, which is why these people were shocked when Hillary Clinton lost. They believed these consultants. But all the consultants cared about, and, and frankly, I think that the consultants even believed their own BS, um, was, was all they cared about was raising money. So that's why when we have these conversations about Kamala Harris and Cory Booker, there's no reason why we should be talking about the presidential races in 2016. No reason. But they think that these candidates need to start early. They need to start hiring people to pitch you know, puff pieces and go out there and fundraise in the Hamptons and need the consultants to come in and keep the consultants away from potential opponents. They need to do all this stuff early because it's, it's a race to them. But it's only a race because the consultants are making it a race. The consultants realize, oh, I can make money in 2016 on a 2020 race. I could take these 10, 15, 20, $30,000 checks a month if I go out there and help this candidate raise money instead of focusing on the real work, which is winning back at the local level. It, it, they've completely lost sight of the issues and changing people's lives, and all they care about at this point is keeping power and control and, and keeping those donors uh, brainwashed. And so, you know, when you, when you think about the DNC, there are a lot of bad actors here. Um, the DNC was supposed to be a service provider. They're supposed to uh, have you know a clean bylaws process. It is supposed to be a democratic process where the DNC members vote on things and the executive committee members um, you know approve a budget and who's being hired and where the resources are being allocated. But instead, that budget is not open. And so, even if they were to start raising money overnight, or if I you know advocated for that right now. I want to know where that money is going, and I hope that you guys can start putting pressure on the DNC to say, where's the money going? Yeah, you're worried about net raising enough money, but you sure did burn a lot of it. And I think that is the big issue. In any other company, they would do some sort of audit after a situation like 2016. After losing 1,100 seats, finding out that there were some state parties that had you know, a couple thousand dollars cash on hand. Um, that is egregious, that is complete mis misrepresentation of the work that they're doing. And if I were a donor, especially a major donor, I would be, incre any donor actually, I would be incredibly frustrated. So they have a brand issue, they have a credibility issue, and frankly, you know, their biggest leaders are screwing them over as well. And so I wouldn't be giving money to President Obama's legislative effort when he abandoned the DNC and won't fund the institution that is supposed to do this work. I wouldn't be giving money to a resistance pack and onward together. You know, that's just about taking care of their people. That's all this is about. They want to take care of their people. And I'm sure Secretary Clinton had a lot of folks that were riding on her winning the presidency and she, they may feel guilty about not having jobs for them. Well, guess what? That's called politics. And when you build this ecosystem of, of trust me or else, or if you're not on my side, you're shut out, that's not healthy. Democratic process, honest process, is what makes this party function. We have to make sure that this budget is open and transparent. I, I, I would never raise money for the Democratic Party until they did that. And I think if you can go out there and share that with your friends who are involved in the party, are involved in local parties, who hear the stories about, these stories about um, the fundraising efforts uh, being so... Um, uh, minimized at this point, you know, tell them, don't you want to know where all that money was spent? We raised more money than ever before we go out there and raise more.